when Twitch originally first uh, became Twitch, they would not let you do just chatting without video games being played on the background. If you were just doing straight up streaming like I am currently, you would get banned. How crazy is that? Big Twitch There's news. There's been a big update over at Twitch headquarters, and I see almost... Bro, get off. Get off Twitch's ass, bro. Jesus Christ. Remember when he was supposed to be on Twitch, on my channel specifically, and then fucking did not show up? Yeah, thanks, Lud. I will never forgive, and I will never forgive. Forget. Fuck. Nobody talking about it, so let's talk about it. It starts with this guy. Now, there's two things you need to know about this guy. You might not be familiar with him, but it's time to get familiar. This is Emmett Shear, the CEO of Twitch. Now, you can forget about him because he has stepped down as CEO of Twitch, which is kind of a big deal because he has been at Twitch for as long as anybody can be at Twitch because he's one of the first three founding members of Justin TV, what it was called before it was fully switched to Twitch. He started in 2007, and he became CEO in 2011 when they made a spinoff of Justin TV for gaming called Twitch TV, which is what you now know today that's been acquired by Amazon in 2014, and he went through all of that. He went through the acquisition, he went through COVID, and he went through the shit that they've been going through the past year. 16 years. That's a long time. Now, he dropped an entire uh, um, little goodbye note that basically said, I'm resigning so I can hang out with my kid, and uh, the, the most important part of this was he talked about the new CEO. Now, before we jump to the new CEO, Emmett Shear, for a long time, has gotten a lot of shit. He's got, I've given him a lot of shit. I've given the guy a lot of shit, which makes sense. He runs the company, and it feels like nobody even knows who he is, and he's a bit out of touch, which, which is fair. But let's back up a moment. When this guy was 24, 24 years old, he founded Justin TV to live stream one of his friends 24-7 that eventually turned into Twitch TV. All right, he got the company through an acquisition, which is a pretty big deal, and dealt with scaling up from what was three employees to thousands of employees. Very hard things to do. Now, in business, there are people who are really good at creating businesses, and then there are people who are really good at running scaled up businesses with thousands of, of employees. I've always felt like Emmett Shear is more of the former than the latter. I feel like ever since StarCraft II fell off, he's checked out of any of the things that actually matter in the space, like the Just Chatting category, which is the largest category for Twitch streamers. And he, at his core, is a StarCraft nerd who's like, I, 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 there's nothing else for me here. There's not the irony is that Justin TV is literally a fucking platform dedicated to, like the original iteration of Twitch was a platform dedicated to doing exactly what I'm doing currently, pretty much, and IRL streams, right? And then Twitch took that and turned it into Let's Play. And they were so aggressive about just chatting that, and this is back when I wasn't around, but I heard that back then when Twitch originally first uh, became Twitch, they would not let you do just chatting without video games being played on the background. Like, you, if you were off the directory, if you were doing just straight up, like... If you were just doing straight up streaming like I am currently, you would get banned. How crazy is that? You would get banned if you didn't do what your title stated back then. You couldn't just hang the fuck out. Yeah. Anyway, um, interesting to think about with respect to where we're at now. Nothing. I got. I got nothing. So, so I think it's a wholly good thing that that he has created, and I think it's also a good thing for the company that he is leaving, so somebody else can take the reins. But the question. Is the new person actually good? Well, this is this is the guy. This is this is Dan Clancy. Now I'm pulling up this picture of him because one, it was on Wikipedia, and two, this is how he was dressed at TwitchCon. So this is how every single streamer saw him. And okay, bro, uh, yeah, he's a bit of an eccentric Silicon Valley guy. He is though. He really is. He is a very. He is the typical. He's the archetypical eccentric Silicon Valley guy. And to his credit, Dan Clancy was very forward at TwitchCon. I remember having many conversations with streamers who had met him because he was the president of Twitch at the time and had gone up to them to talk to them and say, see how they're feeling and, and all that good stuff. He was, he was doing a little, you know, a little, a little schmoozing. You do a little schmoozing every now and again. Now, Dan joined Twitch in 2019, so he's probably credited with growing the site a lot. I don't know how much credit you can give to Dan and how much credit you can give to a novel coronavirus that made everybody get locked into their homes for a couple of years and then make content blow up more than it ever had. But he gets enough credit that now the guy is the goddamn CEO. 
Before this, he worked at some social network called Neighbors, Neighbor, Neighbor, Neighbor City, Neighborhood. Neighbor, I don't know. I think it's like where a bunch of Karens in a neighborhood yell about. No, he actually, he was, uh, wow. Uh, so right wing mogul male uh, surprisingly doesn't know his background. But from what I understand, he worked at YouTube on product. Um, he, he was a, uh, before next door, he actually, yeah, he was at YouTube. So he has a extensive background in like on the, on the product side on YouTube, which he should know cause he's at YouTube. That's, you know, my man is doing one take Jake shit, but <sighs> surprised that he doesn't know that he sat at my table for the meetings with a partner shit. He seems super interested, but also seemed kind of out of touch. Dude wanted to make Twitch great, but didn't really understand what being a streamer was. Yeah. Someone who's driving down the street that looks a little suspicious because their Toyota Camry's uh, beaten down. Anyway, uh, uh, there's there's a few people who are maybe rightly concerned with the new CEO, Dan. Specifically, Dan's Gaming, uh, coincidentally, tweeted this out. Twitch's last remaining founder and CEO has stepped down. The person replacing him is the one who wrote this letter last year. Oh, what's the letter? Uh, why not 70-30? Oh, Wait, what is this ask question shit? What is this? AI XQC. What is that? It's guess mode. Chat ask questions and the AI answers. How do I set that up? I want to do that. EVC been streaming with his own AI bot. I have one. How can I do that? Ask roaring iron. How do I set it up? Pepela, don't do it. Wait, what? Why? Rocket97, thank you for the 20 gift of subs. One of his viewers programmed it. Oh. Don't do it? Wait, why? You banned everyone from mentioning it, so no help. Okay. Like, you guys were probably fucking blasting it while I was, uh, you know, talking about some other shit, so the mods probably keyword banned it in order not to derail the stream. And so now you just don't want to even like experience it. Doesn't this, isn't this self-defeating? Like if you wanted to, yeah. It was, oh, during the earthquake. Yep. There you go. Got it. So I didn't want to talk about it while I was doing the earthquake charity funds. So now the very same people who spammed it are upset and don't want it. Got it. That's cool. Is your chat really this full of children? Yes. Uh, most chats uh, full of children. But. Uh, or adults behaving like children. But ultimately it doesn't really matter because like. It's the vibes you curate I guess. Oh, what am I doing? MD Pog is asking, what do you think of Twitch CEO resigning? Dude, I'm not even gonna lie, bro. Like, that guy was absolutely brain dead. You know, he was... Premium Trash 19 is asking, how do you feel about chat? Yo, yo! Get the AI and use it whenever you leave the chair. This AI is different than the one Athenas uses. One of X's VIPs made it. The AI shit on you last night. Damn. Shizro is asking, why is Hassan Ooh. a champagne socialist? This guy is a fake communist dude. He acts as if he's a communist, but lives in luxury houses in California. If you're a real communist, you would give all your possessions to the government and have no assets. This guy is delusional and a fake and a fraud. <laughs> Meg up zero ID. This is pretty good. Uh, XUC's AI is broken. I mean, uh, it's also, uh, perfectly dumb, but also it's bro. It's just, it's too eloquent. Like XUC can't fucking talk like that. <sighs> Roaring iron is the one who made it. It will say wild stuff for you. Given topics you cover and those topics being fed into the AI, it's still imperfect. The irony is like we tried it. Dirachness underscore 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 is asking who wins in a debate, Hassan or Train? Dud Train absolutely obliterates Hassan in debate. 
Hassan tries to act like he's smarter than he actually is by speaking so quickly that no one can even catch what he says. In reality, his points make no sense and are all nonsense. Train, on the other hand, has coherent points and is a gigachud. So what is this supposed to be? Like, like it, how, how is it making this assessment? I'm so confused. Because it's like, is it supposed to be an accurate uh, assumption of what, like, XUC thinks of me or something? Like, what is it? It guesses the next word. It contradicts all the time. Was it trained off of Reddit clips? Oh, God. <sighs> is it? Like, I would never... You can use tweets or VODs or train when you guys weren't on the best of terms, maybe. It probably has a bit of bias intentionally or unintentionally by who made it, whoever made it. Okay, let's get back to this. Yeah, this is the letter that was originally written September last year about how they were removing 70-30 and they're going to move all streamers to a 50 I forgot the name split. of the Twitch CEO the now. that made everybody Dan, what? throw up their hands and say, what the fuck are you guys doing here? What What's you, his why name? Why are you fucking the creators? We're the ones who literally make all the content for this website. That was Dan that was, Clancy. Now, I don't know how much you can personally pin it on Dan. I don't know if Dan is someone who is particularly like... Yeah, bro, here. This dude had like... Okay, here. If you want to know Dan Clancy's background... Okay, because right wing mogul male, which is, you know, very, very is too fucking busy shitting on Twitch. Yeah, he, he worked at he worked at Google, took an active role in the Google book search copyright lawsuit has been a spokesperson for Google and public statements about the settlement. But from what I understand, this doesn't go deep in the detail of what he did, but he was a uh, he, he played a role in creating the uh, products at Google at YouTube specifically. Um. That's what I have heard. Can't remember if it was from him or I don't know where it was. Uh, I don't know who it was from. Ball and YouTube's products are working so well. I mean, they're pretty good. Yeah, and he worked at NASA before. gung-ho about making money i assume dan's the guy brought in by amazon because amazon the corporate yeah, overlord that owns twitch wants to turn some when sort of profitability president. and dan is the no nonsense nonsense bullshit guy who doesn't give a shit about gaming probably who's gonna enforce all those rules that's that's at least how it feels i don't agree uh, with this. looking from the outside in uh but there are also some different accounts uh, about dan um that same month where he wrote the letter the chief content officer at Twitch announced her departure uh, the, uh, the same day, actually. Uh, and she worked directly under Dan Clancy. Uh, and when the news was announced, uh, she left and said he's out of touch with creators and profit focused. Which I think is Twitch's whole MO. And we have to understand at the end of the day, even though I want creators to be supported, and I am a goddamn creator, Twitch is a company that is trying to... to a drive a profit and as much as they can mask as someone who's trying to be your pal and this is just good old twitch here trying to trying to create content th th no no everyone who's a creator is a commodity you know no, no no different than youtube although i think they mask it a little better and they make me feel better in calls everybody treats the creators like a commodity and the viewers the, the is is the is like what we are trying to serve uh to get more ad sales to, to make more money to to make profit eventually all right that's that's that is the goal. That's the eventual goal. They cannot bleed money forever because the money has to come from somewhere. Uh, and so I, I, I get turning. What? There's no way my speakers are picking it up. I'm, I'm monitoring my levels. Profit, but I think it's been done with, with very it's little not. tact. And I think my biggest issue is not that a company is trying to make profit. It echoes a little that. bit at it's the tail end of my noise gate. product feature that Twitch has released seems to just be scraping from the already existing amount of viewers and trying to extract more and more and more money. You know, they 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 like even took ways that people used to donate directly to the creators like like tips and they took it, they took it and they said, "Ah, now you you do cheers instead where where they get a cut of that donation." And they have hype trains so that if you start subbing, it's like, "Oh, now you got to be part of this hype train to keep subbing." They added gifting to insane levels uh, of of 
uh, donations that now people can give. No, it's either a little bit of echo coming from Lud's video or a little bit of echo that maybe it picks up at the end of the um, at, at the end of the fucking audio. People are just making it seem like it's like an unlistenable experience because they're fucking annoying. That's it. Because no, my noise gate is fine. It's normal. And people just want to flex that they have like six hundred dollar studio headphones or whatever the fuck, and that they're hearing an echo. They just like want to make things worse for themselves so they can complain. They can have something to complain about through Twitch. All of it, all of it, just different ways to extract value from already existing viewers. And my biggest gripe is why don't you add some fucking viewers? Why don't you make some products so that there's some discoverability on the platform? You know why? Why don't we create some sort of system in which people can grow on Twitch? natively without having to grow on YouTube or TikTok and then bring their viewers over to Twitch, which is basically like the final money extraction pit. It, it, it makes no sense. And it seems too uh, reliant on other websites and they lucked out with COVID. Otherwise, I feel like they would have had to have switched their strategy about three years ago. But now but now they, they, now they get away with it. Now they get away with it because they blew up because of COVID and they don't have to actually make that change. But that change should come. That they can't just keep extracting money from the, the people already watching. They're already giving so much. The amount of money that an average Twitch viewer pays for their content is way higher than the average YouTube viewer. Way, way higher. I mean, there's no discoverability on YouTube fucking streaming either, brother. I think you're literally talking about the, the lack of discoverability on streaming in general. Um, that is like maybe a little bit inherent to the, to the platform itself. So, you know, talking about YouTube vids, not YouTube streams. I know, but like comparing Twitch as a platform in and of itself, that is a streaming platform to like YouTube entirely is like comparing YouTube to TikTok. You know what I mean? It's like saying YouTube discoverability is nothing in comparison to TikTok. Yeah, of course. YouTube is better at discoverability because it has a VOD function that has, like, really good discoverability, whereas YouTube streams is, like, literally worse than Twitch with respect to discoverability. Even then, I'm saying she went to a meeting with the executives and executives of the Clips page or a better search design for Twitch, and they said instead of that, they're going to look for a way to have Clips be sent to TikTok and link back to Twitch. They don't understand their own platform. Or, or, and I do think... Oh, or um, they just, I feel like discoverability is, is difficult for live streaming in general. The clips functionality is decent, but I don't think there's a way to parse through like actual clips because millions of clips are made from one stream. Millions of clips are made from one stream. And video on demand versus live stream ho video hosting is like very two entirely different games. And um, millions of clips are made off of one stream, and like parsing through that demands like human curation. And instead of like dumping any funds into that, which would be partial regardless, and they'd fuck it up because it'd be like brand friendly, blah blah blah, lose a lot of that component. They just let um. They just let, like, uh, you know, Reddit and shit uh, do the curation instead. There's no way that number is accurate. Did they make millions of clips off of one stream? Yeah, I'm exaggerating. From that, for their, for their perspective, it just like it's not. They're a live ho web. They're a live video hosting service. VODs are an entirely different game. They will never be able to. They will never be able to beat YouTube on the VOD side anyway. But they can maintain their prominence as a live streaming website. So they just keep going with the live streaming website. Yeah. The point is that many people make clips out of the same moment. So they will be very oversaturated with that method exactly. than the average TikTok viewer, Spotify listener. It's probably more than the average Netflix viewer. Or there are people who are subbed to multiple channels who gift five, ten subs every month. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of... it's. Grow the website. Anyway, I digress. This clip, I feel like, is the most poignant um, 
example of a streamer meeting Dan Clancy and their impression, leaving it. This is Jake and Bake Live, who just won uh, IRL Streamer of the Year, uh, talking about uh, his meeting with Dan. Yeah. It took you a long yeah, time. To be honest, dude, the president of Twitch, I'm sure personally, I have no problem personally with him. <laughs> but honestly, I don't feel confident uh, as a streamer on the platform as someone who is that out of touch. Yeah. I think he's just very eccentric. That's the reason why a lot of people don't feel confident about it. This was also coming fresh off the heels of like the 50-50 split being announced. So I think that's the reason. Because like people hyper-focus on uh, you know your output and the way that you look. And that's usually, why are you so positive about the change? I'm not. I don't give a shit overall, one way or the other. But I do think that... Uh, I do think that the, the main reason why people felt this way, why defend him, why are you carrying water?